Oh, hey, I gotta go. Oh, hey, guys, take a look at this. I got a call. Uh, my B&W powered sub here is uh, is vibrating, rattling, banging, making banging noises. So, I guess I could tell everybody that calls me with B&W, I say, go on the B&W website, B&W Group North America. They got one of the best service websites in the business. Uh, but, a lot of their parts are discontinued when you go on there, but they'll, they'll show you every part they ever had or or have. Anyway, the, uh, the woofer replacement for this ASW 675 is almost six hundred dollars five hundred and seventy nine dollars for the replacement woofer and it's a big chunky woofer but I told the client I said well bring it to me let's see what's going on we'll see why it's buzzing and rattling and we'll see what we can do for you uh, I think we've got video of that uh, if you like the video um, like us on the YouTube and subscribe to our site Okay, you've seen our videos and you know that uh, we mainly work on uh, restoration of vintage stuff, but we get a lot of contemporary stuff too. B&W out of an ASW 675. Alright, looks like pretty chunky in that. I don't know what that weighs. 40 pounds? Hell of a magnet on it. Look at that giant motor. Also, uh, here, so... <laughs> What did we say earlier before we got interrupted? ASW 675 BMW is what this came out of. There's your part number in case you care. It's a big honking woofer. Looks like a nice piece of work, but uh, okay, uh, the customer calls and says, hey, I've got rattling vibration going on here. All right, we've got this double spider. you got a spider up top. you got a spider down here. you got this three-quarter inch or so be between the two. A double spider gives you a good setup, a good uh, stability to keep the voice coil in alignment. You can even see with the open venting here, you can see the coil down in there. You can get a look at the coil. Looks like it's made out of 20 gauge wire or some big heavy inefficient thing. But here's the problem. Here's why it's buzzing and vibrating. Okay, now when I first lifted this up, it had lifted the bottom spider too and the bottom spider was mainly attached here to the bottom of this spacer but as I got all the way around I noticed one part of this was coming loose here too so I, I just simply looked at this and brought the screwdriver around and so if I would have just glued the bottom of this spider back to the frame is what it appeared it needed when it first came in we'd still have a problem because it's coming loose on top of the spider too, where it attaches to this this uh, ring here, this spacer. So I'm going to have to epoxy the spider, the lower spider. I'm going to have to epoxy it to the spacer, and when I get that done, I'm going to have to come in under it and epoxy the spider to the actual frame. Uh, the alignment shouldn't be an issue because the spacer pretty much locks into the frame right where it needs to be but I'm noticing here look it looks like the top spider is starting to come loose too so either B&W did not use the right adhesive or you know these plastic pieces a lot of times they'll have a uh, 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 some type of a, a chemical or a powder or an agent to uh, free them out of the mold so then when you try to glue to them that it won't stick uh, I'm not sure what the you know the actual issue here where they use the wrong kind of adhesive uh, but it didn't stick to this plastic spacer and it didn't stick to the metal frame the painted metal frame either so I'm not sure what kind of adhesive they use but here I'm going to speculate I'm going to blame this on the EU this is more of the save the planet earth mentality hey we can't use an adhesive if it has a chemical in it that it might be toxic in some way uh, because we have to save the earth so that's what I'm going to speculate on but I'm going to use good old-fashioned epoxy when I put this thing back together